Hi viewers, last video we have seen some interview questions on SAP security. As we all know that the core concept of SAP security is authorizations, roles and profiles. So whenever we attend the interview for SAP security roles, uh, the interviewer focuses mostly on the concept of roles and authorizations. So in this video, uh, I want to share you a few questions where interviewers majorly focuses on the concept of the authorization. As I said earlier, it is not that all the interviewers will ask the same questions always and they may not expect the same answers to be there. Just as a knowledge sharing purpose, I am sharing the questions, whatever I do remember, related to the rules and authorization concept. Basically, when the fresher comes for the interview, the most question frequently asked is what is a role in SAP? A role is nothing but a container of authorizations and related objects. A role has the transactions, reports, etc. and related authorization objects. So when this role is assigned to the user, the user gets the required access. How many types of roles do we have in SAP? So we have three types of roles, single role, composite role and derived role. Single role is the one which have the transactions, reports, etc. along with the related authorization objects. What is a composite role? A composite role is the one which includes multiple single roles. What is the difference here is in the single role, we will generate the profile and the authorization data will be there. Whereas in the composite role, there is no authorization data and the profile cannot be generated for the composite role. Some interviewers will ask, can we add a composite role into a composite role? Absolutely no. We cannot add a composite role to a composite role. Only single roles can be added to a composite role. What is a driver role? A derived role is a role which inherits the role menu from the parent role, otherwise called as a master role. Is derived role a single role or a composite role? Derived role and master role, both of them are single roles only. If I want to add a transaction or an authorization to all the derived roles, how it can be done? It is very easy that whatever the new transaction or the authorization you want to add, we can add it in the master role, save the role, generate the profile for the master role and along with, with that there is an option to generate the profiles for all the derived roles. As a result, the transaction and the authorization will be added to all the derived roles. You said that derived role and master role, the difference is only the org value. In that case, if suppose I have a master role which is having 10 derived roles and in that for one or two roles I want to add extra authorizations and I want to change the existing authorizations. Can it be done? Yes, absolutely it can be done. You can change the authorizations which are inherited from the master role in the derived role. But in the real time, mostly we don't do it. We just do changes only for the org values. How can we create a derived role? A derived role creation is very simple as a single role. The only thing is that in the description, we have a field where we will mention the uh, role from where we are deriving it and where there we'll specify the master role. Hence, the inheritance relationship will be maintained for this derived role as well as a specified master role. Some interviewers also ask, how can I break the inheritance relationship between the master role and the derived role? So the same, we need to open the derived role, go to the description tab. In that, in the derived role, we need to uh, delete the inheritance and remove the master role. So then the inheritance will be break between the master and derived role. Here, I do remember now, one of the interviewer asked me a few years back, Whatever you said is correct, but every each and every time I need to go to a single role. For suppose I have 10 to 15 derived roles and I want to remove inheritance for all these roles from the master role. How can you do at once? So I never tried it, even I don't know it, but generally we do as a single one. If anyone knows, please comment the solution. I'm happy to learn it. Maybe I think that they might be using some script or something, but I'm not sure of it. Few times in the interviews, the interviewer asks about the role development process. After listening to it, uh, freshers or the people who learn the course and come to uh, 
uh, interviews simply say that we go to the transaction called PFCG and we start creating the roles but this is not what interviewer is expecting from us so generally what happens a role development of course we do via PFCG only but still based on the client and the project there will be some process defined for the role development basically there will be some uh, modification form role modification form where we will have the details of the uh, role name as well as the uh, role purpose whether it is to be used only by the particular organization field like company cloud or plant or it is a global role and uh, what is the impact of this role what transactions need to be added here what authorizations need to be given etc all the form will be there we need to discuss with the relative functional team and we need to get all these details first and later we will start developing the role in PFCG. The role naming convention is also as per the standards of the project. Most of the time all the roles will be starting with Z or Y. Uh, y for non-production, Z for production. This is a generic one but again it may depend. Along with that there will be in the naming convention to identify if it is a composite role like C and if it is a single role yes, derivative role D and if it is a master role M and based on the environment if it is some ECC they will keep as E, if it is S4 they will keep as some 4 something like that. So in role naming convention also need to be finalized and after knowing this process is finalized once we got the approval we start developing the role in the development system in the development system we will create the role according to the requirement and we will give to the functional team for testing the functional team tests it and ensures that the role is working fine according to the requirement we will call it as general unit testing in some projects later once the role is tested in the development it is moved to the quality via transport how to load the role in the transport in the pfcg itself there is a transport option you can click on the transport option so this role will be loaded to that transport option and this transport number when you give to the basis team or in some cases security team whoever it is so they will move this transport to the quality system in the quality system we will again create a test studies and we will ask the business to test whether the role is working according to their requirements or not. This is called UAT, user acceptance testing. Once it is finalized, then only the roles are moved to the production via transport system. In case if there is an issue where the user is facing when UAT in quality, again we do start changing that changes in the development system. We will again reload to the same CTS or a new CTS and we will move back to them quality and then to production. This is how the role development happens. Roles are developed in development system, tested and moved to quality via transport, tested and then moved to the production via transport system. Here most of the times interviewer also ask, can you explain the, the role deletion process? Role deletion, though we have an option BFCG to delete the role directly, it is not done directly in the real time environment. So we cannot delete the role directly in the production. So this is also done via transport only. What do we do? So whatever the role we want to delete in the development system, first we will put that role in PFCG. I load this to the CTS, that is a transport request, and then I will delete the role. After deleting the role, I will move this transport to quality, then automatically the role gets deleted in quality, and then after then I will move to the production automatically the role deletes in the production what is the difference here if i see when role development process i will first develop the role and then i will load to the cts and then and then i will move it to quality and production in the role deletion first i will load the role to the cts and then delete it in the development and then i will move the transport to the quality and production this is how the role development as well as the role deletion process takes place. What is meant by role upload? There is an option uh, where we can even upload the role rather than transporting to the system. Then the interviewer may ask you what is the difference between role transport and role upload. The role transport is the one where I can transport the role along with the generated profiles and along with the user assignments as well. 
by checking the tick marks but whereas uh, the role upload there is no option so when you upload to the system you need to generate the profile manually that is the difference between role upload and role transport the next part of the questions mostly concentrates on the AGR tables AGR tables are related to the role tables so there are some questions which are posed by interviews related to the AGR tables how can I know the list of derived roles for a particular master role yes we can find via table AGR underscore define where you can see the all the derived roles for a particular master roles how can I get the list of uh, single roles which are part of composite role it is done via AGR underscore AGR is where you can get all the uh, single roles in the composite roles how can I find the roles which is having a particular T code AGR underscore T code is it a table which will give you the uh, roles in which this T code is assigned then there is a small point to remember some interviewers may ask this in generally AGR underscore T codes will give the roles in which the T code is added as a part of role menu in PFCG but if you add it as a part of S underscore T code authorization object it will not fetch so this is a small difference where sometimes interviewer may ask us AGR underscore T codes only pulls the roles in which the transaction code is added as a part of role menu but does not pull the roles in which it is added as S underscore T code then in that case how can I get the roles in which the T code is added as part of S underscore T code as well there is one option is like you can go to SUIM and you can give the authorization object as S underscore T code and give the T code whatever you are searching for and it will pull you all the roles in which the T code is added either in the menu or in the S underscore T code both one of the interviewer asked me is there the only table AGR underscore T codes to get the uh, list of roles where T code is used don't we have any other table yes we do have other table as well what is that AGR underscore 1251 so AGR underscore 1251 is basically a table which stores all the authorization objects and its values of the particular role so if I go to AGR underscore 1251 and if I give the authorization object as S underscore T code and if I give the T code value automatically I will get all the list of roles which the has the T code in it so this is the other way can you tell me what is the usage of AGR underscore 1252 AGR underscore 1252 is a table which stores the organizational fields and the values of the roles I want to find out the list of users who have access to a particular T code in a particular plant how are you going to achieve it so here there are three parts one is the user should have got access to the T code given second the user should have access to the plant given and I want to know the list of users so I need to make use of AGR underscore 1252 give the org field value as plant and give the plant value I will get the roles which is having access to that particular plant the roles are having access to the plant but it doesn't mean that these roles have the transaction code in it so in that case now I'll take these roles as an input and I can go to AGR underscore 1251 give the input as these roles and I'll give S underscore T code as an authorization object and give the T code value now among these roles whichever role is having that required T code that roles are filtered and it is given as an output for us considering these input roles I will go to AGR underscore users AGR underscore users is a table which gives you the users uh, and the roles assigned to them so when I give these roles there uh, it will give all the users who are assigned to these roles so these are few of the important AGR tables AGR underscore AGRS which is used for composite and single role AGR underscore define which is used for master and derived role AGR underscore users user assigned to the roles AGR underscore T codes T codes assigned to the role AGR underscore 1251 which is used for the all the authorization objects and the values in the role and AGR underscore 1252 for the org field values AGR underscore T codes we said that it will pull only the T codes which are added as a part of role menu now here sometimes the interviewer may confuse you and ask more questions also 
we need to remember that whenever a take code is added to the role menu it added in both role menu as well as under s underscore t code but the vice versa is not possible that means if you add a t code under s underscore t code authorization object it will not be reflecting in the role menu that small point we need to remember so that even though interviewer may ask the question in a different way we will be able to answer it uh, these are the few questions related to the rules which are mostly asked by the interviewers in the SAP security interview. Still there are questions which are related to authorization objects, uh, critical objects and other transaction codes as well. So we will try to see few more interview questions in the next video. Thanks for watching.